bout. It's an opportunity for him to move right into boxing spotlight. This fight's the most important fight of my career. Uh, because if I win this fight, it should move me into the top five and that'll put me in position for a world title shot. Doug DeWitt has worked hard to elevate himself to his current status among the top 10 middleweights. The Youngstown, Ohio native who now lives in Yonkers, New York, has always had the big punch. And in his last fight two months ago, he showed heart and stamina. However, some have questioned his boxing ability and intelligence in the ring. Against the polished former champion, McCrory, he'll need all the skills. A lot of people think that I have to walk in and uh, land one punch or just slug to beat Milton McCrory. They don't know how I could box. You know, in the fight, when the fight is down and the chips are down, I could box. And I'll prove it on Sunday. Doug DeWitt, ranked number five in the world by the WBA, just entered the ring. He's from Yonkers, New York, and he is indeed ready. Well, Gil, uh, for Milton McCrory, uh, despite the fact he's up against a legitimate top ten middleweight for the first time uh, in his press conference, his comments this week, his training, he seems to be very confident that uh, he'll be a comfortable fighter at 160. Yes, Tim. He said it was miserable for him to try to make the 147-pound limit. He was actually thinking of retiring. Now he's fighting as a middleweight. He said he loves boxing again. The fun is back. And you know, a happy worker is a good worker, and he had better be today. Well, Milton McCrory has been the championship route before, and he realizes he may have a shot at a second crown. When Sugar Ray Leonard chose to retire because of an eye injury, his undisputed World Wellaway Championship was up for grabs. Among the contenders for the vacated crown was Milton the Iceman McCrory, out of Detroit's Cronk Gym, unbeaten in 20 bouts with 17 knockouts. McCrory battled Colin Jones for the crown twice. Their first match ended in a draw. McCrory opened the rematch by knocking down Jones in the first round, but the Welchman recovered and fought his way back. Once again, he and McCrory went the distance. Two fights, 24 rounds. Finally, the Iceman emerged as welterweight champion. Winning the uh, World Championship was my goal. You know, I did it once in the amateur, and then I did it professional, you know. And uh, when I beat Colin Jones for the title, it was, I was, it was expected to be done. It was like a relief I did it now. McCrory's next goal was to defend that hard-won title. He did so with both style and power. He brandished a stinging left hand and a finishing right that left opponents strewn in his wake. Yet national recognition was strangely absent. McCrory was overshadowed by his friend and Kronk teammate Thomas Hitman Hearns. Hearns scored the biggest victory of his career against Roberto Duran in Las Vegas. His dramatic knockout made him the center of attention in the boxing world. While McCrory was also a world champion, his pal the Hitman had become a media hero. Thomas is the type of a guy that enjoys a superstar stature, and Milton's very quiet, low-key. He would rather go to a gym and work out, take his own bags, not have anyone even know that he's there. The whole world knew where McCrory was on the night of his title unification bout with Donald Curry. Like McCrory, Curry had something to prove, and prove it he did. The Cobra struck swiftly. Within two rounds, it was over. The Iceman had suffered a sudden and total meltdown. I thought I was going to win the fight. Um, I never thought before I was going into the fight that I was going to be knocked down in the second round. I never thought that but I never went into the ring. McCrory has picked up the pieces of his career. He's moved up to middleweight. And now he's intent on capturing a second world championship. People want to be surprised that they're going to see a much, much stronger fighter than they've saw before. And I predict that he will knock out Doug DeWitt for the first time in DeWitt's career. And so WBC welterweight champion, now a middleweight after losing the unified crown to Donald Curry and hopefully en route to a middleweight crown. The Kronk people believe he can do it. Milton McCrory may wind up at 154 pounds, and that answer may be provided by a true middleweight here today, Doug DeWitt. So it's McCrory and DeWitt, and we'll be back with the opening bell for round number one when Sports Sunday continues live from Las Vegas after these words from your local station. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Showboat Sports Pavilion in Las Vegas, Nevada, where today Top Rank Incorporated in association with the Showboat Hotel and Country Club presents Middleweight Mayhem, an afternoon of world-class boxing. 
These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Freddie Little Chairman, the Commissioner at ringside, Mr. Dwayne Ford, the Executive Director, Harold Buck, and your matchmaker is Mel Grebb. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for this afternoon's contest, the judges are Bill Graham, Jerry Roth, and Patricia Jarman. The timekeeper is Jane Broadfoot. Counting at the knockdowns, Al Bicek, the attending physician at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo, and your referee is James Molinell. This is the main event of the afternoon. Ten rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Introducing in the red corner, fighting out of Yonkers, New York, weighing in at an even 160 pounds, with a professional record of 26 wins, two defeats, three draws, and 16 KOs. He's rated number five by the WBA. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Doug DeWitt. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 158 three-quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 28 wins, one defeat, one draw, with 22 KOs. He is the former WBC welterweight champion of the world, Milton McQuarrie. I expect a good clean contest. I want you to listen to my commands. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Take hands and take a good clean battle. Good luck to both of you. So Chuck Hull with the final instructions, uh, the introductions rather, and the referee with the final instructions, James Molinell from Las Vegas. The judges, Bill Graham, Jerry Roth, and Pat Jarman. There's the tail of the tape with McCrory coming in at 158 and three quarters. DeWitt right at the 160 limit. And the height advantage, of course, to uh, Milton McCrory, like his teammate in the front table, uh, stable, Thomas Hearns, who is here at ringside. Watching McCrory, and we're all set for round number one. McCrory in goal. Doug DeWitt in the white trunks with red trim. And a good live boxing crowd at the showboat. Las Vegas is real serious boxing fans recognizing this as a most interesting bout. Hard to pick a winner. Everybody wanting to see what McCrory can do with this weight. And everybody trying to find out more about Doug DeWitt, who's had kind of an in-and-out performance record over the past two or three years. But as Joe Clancy and I saw in the gym over these uh, past few days, uh, he is physically and mentally ready for this one. Doug DeWitt, 24 years of age, from Yonkers, New York. He's trained with Marvin Hagler and Wilfred Benitez and been in with the likes of Don Lee, Mike Tinley, Teddy Mann. Tim, Doug DeWitt has a good snapping jab, and he's safe when he doubles it up. But when he throws one jab, he has a tendency to drop it. So he can look for Milton to try to hit him on the chin with a right hand over the jab. There he dropped that left hand again. That's very, very dangerous. Well, we know McCrory can throw that right hand. That's his best punch. Well, again, Tim, let's see what happens when he hits a full-fledged middleweight on the chin with a right hand. DeWitt has said he's not concerned about McCrory's power. He's been hit by middleweights plenty and thinks he has a good chin. He's never been stopped in his career. McCrory just tried to drop that right hand in there, Tim, over the jab. Halfway through round number one. for Doug DeWitt. Third for McCrory. DeWitt seems to stand straight up, Tim. Looks a little tight to me still, even though he did land that good left hand a little well, while ago. First big fight on national television, Tim. Have a tendency to get that way. Another good solid left. In fact, Doug said the same thing to Milton. Good left jab. Under the 30-second mark we go. Now that last left hook of the body you saw is what DeWitt is known for. If McCrory's recognized by his overhand right, that left of the body is DeWitt's power punch. And it's a beauty. 
right hand of McClure. He's just missed. Final seconds of round number one. Take a look now back at that left hook by DeWitt in the first round. Landed high on just above the left eye of McClory. The hardest punch of the round It scored. And we're in live action round number two. DeWitt and White, McClory and Gold. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from Las Vegas. Milton McClory, since his loss to Donald Curry, scored a 10 round decision over Keith Adams, his only other middleweight bout. Has fought three times at 154 pounds, won all of those, but not against strong opponents. Look at that good solid left jab, has been able to land with it. Sky, the wit has a good stiff punishing jab. When it lands, it really can snap your head back. He pulled away from it just at the last second, reducing some of the impact. McCrory doing the stalking here in round two. Both fighters threw good body punches in that exchange, Tim. Office. He said he dared McClory to walk into him. And so far, McClory's doing the move, walking in, and DeWitt is doing the backing up. There he's backing into the ropes again. Under a minute to go on round number two. DeWitt definitely looking to counterpunch in this round, and perhaps just trying to see what McClory's got to offer. walk around the ring, ring the way DeWitt is doing now. You can't set quickly enough. I think you should put it into a different gear. Can't win the round either. I guess. That's right. Under the 30 second mark we go in round two. Right hand by McCrory. Landed on the neck of DeWitt. Well, I expect to see Doug DeWitt get hit with a lot of right hands during the course of the fight. And I expect him to land. they got a lot of good left hooks. Almost as though DeWitt wanted to find out what kind of power McClory has. Gave him some free opportunities in this round. <laughs> round number three, interesting comments in the DeWitt corner. Yeah, Tim, uh, here's a case where Doug DeWitt's been working steadily with Donald Turner for a month. Now the trainer tried to tell him what he wanted him to do, and DeWitt says, I have a fight plan, I have a game plan, let me do it my way. And Donald Turner rightly said, it's better to keep up than catch up. He felt that Doug DeWitt lost the last round by default. So Doug DeWitt, uh, with, with his own game plan, we could hear him clearly say that, and use up a little energy when you get into a little verbal argument with your trainer between rounds. So let's see uh, what effect this has, if any, on the rest of the fight. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from Las Vegas. Left cup scored by DeWitt. Corey missed with the right. Referee Molinell asking DeWitt to keep them up. Oh, big right hand by McCrory. Solid right. That's the punch that DeWitt is vulnerable for, Tim. That right hand over the low left hand. Trained by Donald Turner, working under his fourth manager, which has been part of the problem in his kind of in-and-out career. Manager now, Phil Volker. His brother, Gordon, working in the corner with him, along with Paul Privatera. Brother Gordon just turned pro. A warning to DeWitt for pushing McCrory into the ropes. Side of the 
Felix Nose, an already battered nose, as you can plainly see. Under a minute to go in round number three, scheduled for 10. Tim, I'd like to get inside DeWitt's head and see what his game plan is. Well, he didn't even let Donald Turner in on it uh, between rounds. He just told him he had one. But now he's moving forward. DeWitt. Solid left to the body, a left hook back from McCrory. Another short chopping left by DeWitt. McCrory's staying there with him. With the 30-second mark we go, round three. Well, this is the kind of fight that I expected DeWitt to fight. Move Milton back and bang to the body. He, he certainly got Milton's attention. Corey's scoring from outside. Witt just drops his hands and bites him to come in. Final seconds of round three. Three years ago. Round number four. Vegas, Nevada, and DeWitt appears to be uh, really strung tightly as, uh, again, there was a minor incident in this corner. He got up off the stool early when they put the water on him. Tim, he got off the stool. He started to walk away, and Donald Turner grabbed him by the left hand and pulled him back. Looks like he's fighting not only McCrory, but Donald Turner. So this is round number four, scheduled for 10. Doug DeWitt in white. All right, and now DeWitt is back backpedaling again. things he seemed to want to prove was that he could uh, box and move in addition to being a slugger. He's telling Milton McCrory to hit him on the chin. And, and Milton obliged, hit him right on the chin with the right hand. And a left uppercut.
I think this is a, a surprising poor performance thus far for Doug DeWitt. There's a left hand. A lot of steam on it. A little better one of the body behind it. Now a combination of the body by the whip. All right, now this round he's moving forward. The last two rounds he moved backwards. He should just make up his mind and go forward and stay going forward. Corey's still looking very relaxed. Off the spring. Experience of the championship bouts standing him in good stead. He's fought in title about seven times. There's a left hand by the wit that rocked McCrory. Caught him backing up, so it appeared more damaging than it was, but it did hurt him. Now, as the wet in the 
this infighting has managed to do some damage. Under the 30-second mark we go. It's very damn Another low blow by Doug DeWitt. That'll get a warning from the referee. athlete's foot. This is where it ends. Mycotin. Only Mycotin cures athlete's foot with myconazole, a medically proven ingredient that eliminates athlete's foot. This is where athlete's foot begins. This is where it ends. Mycotin. The end of athlete's foot. If you're shopping for a new car, you could race around town looking for a low finance rate or run yourself ragged trying to find a cash back offer. So don't shop till you drop. Your Lincoln Mercury Mercure dealer has it all, like 6.9 annual percentage rate financing or from $300 to $600 cash back on select Mercury models or special low lease terms on Lincoln's and Mercure XR4TI. So why shop till you drop? See your Lincoln Mercury Mercure dealer instead. with us. We've got uh, four for McCrory, two for DeWitt with one even, and one of those rounds uh, could be a swing round the other way in McCrory's favor, a close call on our card for DeWitt back in the first round. So Donald Turner is trainer is seeing the fight the same way we are, and in the McCrory corner, things were calm and confident with Emmanuel Stewart in charge. Let's see uh, whether McCrory changes his strategy here in round eight as he had uh, boxed and worked well from the outside in the last round he went inside and we scored that round for him he did well inside not only said that he win the round but he um, DeWitt was penalized one point well he did take a point away for the low blow and there is now a cut at the corner of the left eye of Doug DeWitt opened early here in the eighth round point in the fight it almost looks like he has to to win the fight. Well either way if he, if he won all the remaining three rounds or perhaps he could win a, a decision but uh, he's not fighting that way. knit crop stable from Detroit. They all come out to support each other and they do indeed spar with each other. That's a show in itself. People could pay admission to watch Milton and Thomas bang on each other in the crop gyms. That's why I say, Tim, when they were going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Milton was in familiar territory. <laughs> he sure was. Once 
think that Tommy does not take it easy on Milton, and Milton doesn't take it easy on Tommy. This is round number nine, and as we have said, uh, Mr. DeWitt running out of rounds, running out of time, as we see it. Well, he's, he's trying a different strategy now. Now he's backing up again, boxing, moving around. 16 knockouts and 26 bouts. Tim, he's capable of scoring a knockout at any time in the fight. If he hits you properly with that left hook, you could go. Well, Maybe uh, the fading hope for a knockout. As we see it on our scorecards. Judges are Bill Graham, Jerry Roth, and Patricia Jarman, all from Las Vegas, on the 10 point system. McCoy get the jab work. He used that left jab, and he did. He set up a good right hand right on the chin. That's why it pays to listen to your cornerman. The way just fighting in spurts seems to still have a lot of snap, but just not staying busy. difficult for him to stay busy with good movement. I don't know whether Milton needed a confidence builder fighting an experienced middleweight ranked fifth in the world, but he's got to feel real good about his performance at this point. Yes, he does, Tim. He's taken some good shots, proved he can take a punch, and he's hurt. Doug DeWitt a few times. This is about as often as I've ever seen Doug DeWitt get hurt. He's been in with some good bangers. There's the 30-second mark in round number nine. A little blood from the nose and McClory again. A thumb that time. Doug DeWitt is thumbed in the eye. Well, continually, you talk about the mental and the physical being equally important. It seems that maybe the mental preparation by DeWitt wasn't as strong as we thought it was. Well, more of the Tour de France. The rest of the uh, conclusion of our coverage of today's action at the Tour de France uh, upcoming. And uh, so stay with us. And remember, another week to go in that grueling test across France. And American Greg LeMond still very much in the hunt because they head into the mountains on Tuesday. There is Doug DeWitt. And Doug DeWitt, as we see it now in our card, must have a knockout in the 10th round. Will the corner of Milton McCrory tell him to box and move? We'll find out here. In Milton McCoy's corner. That's what I tell him to do. Move around, box, kill the clock. You got the fight won. And don't relax, whatever you do. Impressive performance by McCrory to this moment in the fight. Disappointing show by DeWitt. Contrarily, there was a lot of mystery involved in this fight. That was the charm of the matchup as to what uh, DeWitt would do against the experienced and taller Milton McCrory, what McCrory would do against the experienced middleweight, a guy who'd been 160 pounder who can hurt you, banging to the body, pressuring. So far, for Milton McCrory, it's uh, been a pretty easy afternoon.
punches here, not giving DeWitt a chance at the knockout blow. Milton's going to finish a tired fighter, and that's the way you should finish. Final seconds of the fight. Milton McCrory, the former WBC welterweight champion, was an impressive show as we see it. And DeWitt throws his hands up, and I think he's, uh, he's dreaming. McCrory and Doug DeWitt and the crowd here at the showboat, a full house, wondering uh, what they would see here today with the welterweight moving up the middleweight and the solid established middleweight. Well, uh, the fight did not go, I don't think, the way anybody uh, here as a fight fan expected. So we'll have the official decision from Las Vegas when we return on CBS Sports Sunday in just a moment. Stay with us. We are back at the showboat. Let's get the decision from Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Jerry Ross scores the bout, 97-92. Judge Patricia Jarman scores, 95-94. And Judge Bill Graham scores the bout, 99-92. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Milton McCrory. Milton McCrory uh, by unanimous decision, which uh, comes as no surprise to uh, Bill Clancy and I, as you can tell in our reporting of the bout. And uh, for Milton McCrory, it's uh, got to be a tremendous uh, boost in his confidence as uh, thinking about uh, what may happen now in the middleweight ranks. Milton, can we get you over here? And Emmanuel, 